So today we will discuss some uh, problems related to genetic biases that we have discussed in the last class. Last few classes we are talking about uh, uh, biasing techniques. So first of all, let us take a look at this circuit. It says that this is a no bias circuit. Why it is called no bias? Because we just observe the base is connected to signal directly. It's connected to signal directly. There is no bias. You don't have any battery kind of base and the emitter. The emitter is uh, considered to be the common terminal, the ground terminal. And then uh, the question is you have to find out the maximum collector current for faithful amplification. And the second question is the minimum zero signal collector current. Nothing is specified. You can consider anything with you. Nothing is specified. Or you can consider some uh, typical values for DC like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. It's a no bias. Right? It's a no bias from base to emitter. You don't have any collection. I mean, no uh, DC supply is present. So, which ensures that your signal must be riding on some non-zero DC. For example, if your signal is something like that, suppose your signal is something like that. And you would like to have some amplified version out of it, it's not at all expected. Why not? Because this part of the input might drive the active linear linear. But whenever your input signal goes negative, and since there is no bias, you, you must be knowing what is the what is the essential feature of bias. That means we are creating the environment for the subsequent amplification. You have to ensure some non-zero DC collector current, non-zero DC base current, non-zero collector temperature of voltage, so that the subsequent amplification can be part. Now this is a no bias circuit that means if your input is riding on a zero DC something like that, then obviously you don't have a feedful amp. Okay. So it suggests that your input must be riding on a non-zero DC level, not like this. So the first question says the first part of this question says that asks that find out the maximum collector current for faithful amplification. <laughs> maximum collector current for faithful amplification. Let's assume that, okay, let's assume that VCE is equal to 0. If nothing is specified, you can consider VC to be 0. That means from here to here, you don't have any drop. Typically, that drop is 0.1 to 0 0.2 volt, but uh, if nothing is specified, 0. I get And under which case, you have the maximum collector current. Because all these 6 volts, the entire 6 volt will drop across this resistance. Resistance is fixed 2.5 kilo ohms. 6 by 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 2.5 kilo
that means we would like to find out so whenever my input is writing i mean the input level is zero the fluctuation is zero then what is the amount of your base current or what is the amount of your collector because meter is not provided right maximum collector current is 2 milliampere you have already calculated 5 volt 6 volt minus 1 volt 5 volt divided by 2.5 kilo ohms so maximum collector current is 2 milliampere now whenever it's not specified because there is no bias there is no bias from here to here no bias is specified that means it is expected when the signal is present then that signal is able to drive the transistor into the active region. Okay. So, signal must not write on a zero DC level like this. It must write on a non-zero DC level, like so. Suppose this is a signal. The signal must be so whenever the signal level is zero, that means there is no fluctuation. What is the average level of this one? This is the average level. This is the average level of the signal. Right? Let it be say V of A V. Right? Now this is not equal to zero. This is some non-zero. Right? That is required by because there is no bias provided in this particular circuit. So the bias itself is provided by the signal itself, by the by the signal. Okay. There is no explicit bias. So if I have this kind of input signal, then this part of your input will drive the transistor into cutoff. Right? Because here you find that if your input voltage is negative, the basic consumption is reverse bias. You have to ensure that basic consumption has to be forward bias, which should be greater than 0.1 volt and voltage. So your input signal must write on this way, non zero display. Right? Then, whenever input is at its negative peak, that means over here, input is at its negative peak, over here, at that point of time, you can expect that my collector current at least it should be zero. While the input is minimum, then the collector current must be at least zero, cannot be less than zero. Right? And you know the maximum collector current. 2 milliampere. So 2 milliampere is when your so this corresponds to 2 milliampere collector current. So 2 milliampere IC. And this corresponds to 0 milliampere collector current IC. Right? So accordingly, you have to find out what should be my zero signal collector. If I have an equal swing, so 0 to 2 milliampere, 1 milliampere. That means what? Uh, suppose this is your input, your output should be something like that. Either this one, a phase reversal, or might be this one. But it cannot be this one. So these are allowed. But it cannot be this one. Neither be this one. So these are not allowed. Okay. This is allowed. This is allowed. But this is not allowed. This is not allowed. That means the signal shape has to be preserved. Signal shape has to be preserved. That is called faithful amplitude. 
Which one? Maximum connector, connector, test connector, is it related? Yes, it is related. I am coming to that. I am coming to that. Hopefully, in the next page it is given. Yeah. Sir, which are you doing? Yeah, this slide. This slide. Sir, and this is video signal connected. There is no time variation of your input. That means any signal, any signal can be represented, any signal can be represented as a DC level plus a time variant component. So when I call like a zero signal, that means this time variant component is absent. Only the DC level is present. Now sometimes your signal itself is writing a zero DC level. That means it is only this time variant component. Or the signal itself is writing on some non zero DC level. Now, if the transistor is not passed externally, then you have to ensure that my signal must consist that DC level so that the transistor operates properly. I'm coming to that. Why it is 1 million here? So. That is the maximum level of the collector current, 2 million here. 6 volt, you have, you have to maintain at least 1 volt drop. So 5 volt must drop across RC. So 2.5 kilo ohms, 5 volt must drop across RC. So 5 volt by 2.5 kilo ohms, so 2 million here. So when your input is maximum, that means when the input, suppose your input is something like that, when the input attains this peak, then the character current is maximum. What is that? 2 million here. When the input is at its negative peak, then the character current is equal to 0. That is the extreme condition. Right? So 0 to 2 million ampere, that is the variation of the character current. Whenever the signal is present. Yes. Right? So what is the DC level? This yeah. means no signal. That is the average of 0 to 2 and means 1 million. Now that 1 million pair can be provided from outside if I provide a bias. Otherwise, your signal itself consists of that DC level. It must write on a non-zero DC level. Okay. This is zero bias case or no bias case. Then another circuit. Yeah. Hopefully, I have seen this circuit last day. Yes, sir. It's a fixed bias. Fixed bias circuit, or sometimes also called base bias circuit. Fixed bias and base bias. Now, here we have two different supply voltage. One is 9. Typically, we call it DCC. And there is another voltage, <coughs> say 2 volt. Typically, we call it VBB. One is VCC, 9 volt. Second one is VBB, that is 2 volt. You can also have the same connection. I mean, uh, you can take these connections from here only. Here only. It is also possible. Last day, hopefully, in that particular slide, it is shown that the same connection was created. Yes, yes. Okay. And accordingly, you have to change the value of this RB. If uh, this is taken from this 9 volt supply, then RB should be increased to some extent. Anyway, here it is 2 volt and 9 volt. Now, you have to find out beta voltage for beta to be equal to 50. Okay. Now, okay. well, let's assume that your VB is equal to 0.7. Sometimes you can neglect it, sometimes you cannot. If you cannot neglect, you can find out. Uh, here you have a 2 volt supply. IB kind will flow through this RB. And then you have seen symmetry is ground there. So you have VB drop there. So 2 volt, what you can write there, VBB is equal to VBE plus IB times RB, right? So here you have 2 volt, VB 0.7, 
So 2 minus 0.7 that is 1.3 volt, 1.3 volt upon 100 kilo. 13 micro ampere. 13 micro ampere. Okay, let it be 13 micro ampere. Now, hopefully, they, are, they have neglected VB, so that's why they have got 20 micro ampere because they have neglected. But since 2 volt and 0 0.7, since they are comparable, I must suggest that you should not neglect because 2 volt is very much close to each other, cannot neglect. It's 20 micro ampere, but actually, it should be 13 micro ampere, 1 3. Uh, beta is given like 50. So you can calculate what is the IC? IC is equal to beta times IC. 1, 3. So obviously this calculation is somewhat different. It should be like, uh, so in your case, IB is equal to 13 microampere and IC is equal to 0.65 milliampere. Microampere. Okay? And then you can apply another cave here along this row. Along this row. This is equal to ICRC plus BC. Right? This is given 9 volt. This is 9 volt. And then you have VCC is equal to ICRC plus VC, right? Remember all this IC, VC, all of them are coefficient. Collector kind, coefficient, right? So IC is equal to your 9, uh, how much? Uh, 0.65 milliampere. Then what is VC, Q or VC? 0.65 9 volts minus 0. Sorry. 9 volts. 9 minus 9 minus 9 minus 6 5 into 2 RC is 2. So 0 0.65 in, in milli, 2 in kilo. Uh, that is 1.3. 1 1.3 1 that means uh, 7 point. Okay, 7.7. 7. We have got like 7. That the design that we have got ultimately, in your case, it is 7.7. So, ultimately, what we got? Ultimately, we got like B. CEQ is equal to 7.74, right? And ICQ is equal to 0 0.65 million. Do you think that this design, that is bias design, is a good one? So this design is not properly done. It should be close to 4.5 or 5 volt. It's not a very good design. Even if there is no fluctuation, even if there is no such fluctuation, but the design is not that good. Also, how to make it a very good design? Now, forget, forget about the other biasing circuits. Suppose I am considering the same bias. Not RP. You have to 
to reduce this thing. We have to reduce this thing. Because 7.1 is not a very good design. 9 volts should expect where? 4.5. So suppose you, so this particular circuit is given to you, and suppose you would like to design the, you would like to synthesize the circuit. I have to make it close to 4.5. Right, close to 4.5. So how do we make good design? So there are two para, there are two choices. Either you change RP or you change RC or you change both. That's what I have told. Either you change RB or you change RB or you change both. If you, if you change both of them, they will be even more complicated. Right. So the thing is that. You have to ensure that my VCQ, typically, suppose I would like to fix it at 4.5 volt. Right? Suppose I would like to change only one parameter, not 4.5 volt. Right? So, therefore, this ICRC drop, ICRC drop, that is also equal to 4.5 volt. That is also 4.5 volt. Now suppose RC is given like 2 kilo. Right? Now you have to ensure that you cannot have mathematical, you can say that okay, that is my load line, I can have any value. And once again, you have to ensure that that value, that value of IP must not be that large so that the device enters into the such a saturation. Accordingly, you have to fill it. Say, for example, since it is 4.5 volt, uh, <coughs> let it be suppose. Let, let's take say, let's take RC is, or, or let's take RC is equal to 2 kilos. No problem. RC is equal to 2 kilos. What is the IC value then? What is the IC value then? 2.25 milliampere. 2.25 milliampere. That's a reasonable one. The collector current should be in the range of milliampere. This is the one 2.25 milliampere. Now you have uh, beta is equal to 50. Beta is equal to 50, right? So what should be your IPQ? 2.5 divided by 50. What is that? 0.045. 45 micro might be large. 45 micro might be large as far as the device is concerned. Typically, you should keep it within 30 or something. Anyway, let's take it. Okay, if, if the device is still uh, with 45 micro if the device is still there in the active, we have we don't have any problem. If you have 45 micro ampere and still with 45 micro ampere, the device is there pretty much in the active region or linear region, then we don't have any problem. Right? But still with 45 micro. Then I have to modify RB. I have to modify RB. Isn't it? So you have a point seven volt drop there. And now if uh, you have two volt supply there, if I have a two volt supply. So two is equal to zero point seven plus forty five micro into. 10 to the power minus 6 RP. 1.3, 3 there, divided by 45 micro. What is the value? 20. 20. 20. 20. Kilos or something like that. So let's take RB is equal to 33 kilos. That means our objective, since your VC is large enough, 7.7 .7 in the previous design, so I have to reduce the VC value. 
that kind of problem you have to uh, you have to face you have to design the circuit itself you have the exhibition you have a lab one with some value the simulation model you have to design the circuit itself the values will not be given to you and the reverse engineering yes so it is when you have a 10 volt supply you have a 10 volt supply and you have to make the or you have to keep that particular DC operating point at the 5 volt and with the same, not like a fixed bias circuit like this, rather you have to consider some even more sophisticated biasing circuit like a voltage divider bias circuit. So accordingly you have to simplify all those values. If it is 5 volt then what should be IC RT from and if that IC is given then if that IC is given what should be IB and then what should be my RT value, what should be my supply voltage over there. Okay. So the thing is since VCQ is large enough and 0.7 I have to reduce the VCQ. From 7.7 .7 to close to 4.5, that means I have to increase IT. Right? So therefore, I have to increase IT. So I have to reduce R. Second part of the problem says that with R is equal to 50 kilo ohms, find out the new operating point. So with I is equal to with R is equal to 50 kilo ohms, you need to find out the new operating point. The same calculation this time. It is much better. 5 volt 2 milliampere. This time it is much better. 5 volt 2 milliampere. You would like to place the operating point between 0 to 9 volt. Your 9 volt supply 0. So typically if it is close to 4.5 or so, it is much better. Now it is 5 volt. Okay, you can take it. So, change the beta. Uh, RB is changed. No, that calculation is wrong. That calculation is wrong. This calculation is wrong. This is not 50, this is not 100, this is 50 kilo ohms. No, sorry. This should be 50 times yeah, 50 into 4000 microampere to million. That was the previous calculation. Okay? Yes. Now this time we have the uh, same supply. Not do it by yourself. Find out, draw the DC load line and determine the operating point for beta is equal to 100. Let's assume that it is uh, 0.7 volt, maybe it's wrong. 0.7 volt drop, point seven volt drop. Yes. DC you have to find out. DC you have to find out. Because if it is 0 0.7, actually uh, this particular combination of this RB and the VCC actually drives actually drives you to take VCC DB is equal to 0 0.7. Because then uh, your IP is in the range of 100, not 10 micro, 100 micro. 6 volt minus 0 0.7, that is 5.3. 5 volt to 5 10 micro. 10 micro. Beta is equal to 100, so 1 milliampere. 1 milliampere and drop is 4 minus 2. 6 minus 2, 4 volt. 4 volt drop across this VC. How to draw the DC load line? 
Once again, the base by itself, a fixed by itself. But last time we have calculated only the corresponding I, B, I, C, E, C, and studied that if there is some fluctuations. Because of the temperature change, because of dB change, because of beta change, then that particular IC, IB, or dB, what you are getting, that is not a stable one. Right. Now, in this particular problem, we have to verify this one that if there is a change in the temperature, for example, uh, if there is a change in the temperature from, say, uh, 25 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade, where the beta changes from 100 to 150, that means there is a change in beta by 50%. Then, by how many percentage uh, this particular Q point values change? Determine the percentage change in Q point values over the temperature change from 25 centigrade to Consider. And obviously, if there is a there is an increase in the temperature, so when temperature increases, when there is an increase in temperature, we expect that beta must drop. And at the same time, we also expect that this dB must drop. dB must drop. Hopefully, I have started this one. As temperature changes, dB must drop. Right? So, here you have, so, in order to find out that particular change, percentage change in two-point values, as you have mentioned, that there are two viewpoints. One is that ICQ, one is ICQ, second one is VCQ, right? So, you have to find out the change for each of these. Percentage change for ICQ as well as the percentage change for VCQ. And while doing so, we are just considering the change in the temperature, I mean the change in the temperature is reflected by the change in the beta value only, not the change in the base beta voltage. And obviously, the is coming. And as uh, the temperature increases, you also understand that this ICQ also increases. So that we are not considering for the time being. We are not considering this one, we are not considering that one. Only this one. As beta change, as temperature changes, only the change in beta here, yeah. not the change in the dB value, not in the dB value. <laughs> mention. Because the mention that you just neglect all the Then what is the uh, percentage change, what you are getting? With 25 degrees centigrade, what are the IBQ, ICQ, and VCQ? Call it on IBQ, just tell me the ICQ value and VCQ value. What is the ICQ and what is the VCQ? Okay. Yes. This base meter drop is 0.7 volt only. We have a 12 volt supply there. I 
ICQ is how much? 11.3 million PR. Which is 5.67 volt. Okay, fine. You have 12 volt supply. You have 12 volt supply. And the RC is equal to 560 ohms. So RC is not that large. RC is not that large. That means close to 24 million. Close to 24 million. Not you are getting that is the IC max. Close to 24 million. What you are getting? 8.3. Almost in the middle. Almost in the middle. Right. Uh, 12 years by 560 ohm. 12 by 560. BCC upon RC. 12 by 560. What is the value? Close to 24 and should be somewhat higher than that. Now, somewhat lower than that. Because it is 560. Yeah. Uh, in the linear, so you just consider these are the two points. This is VCC, and this is. This is VCC upon this value is VCC. This is VCC upon RC. So here we have 12 volt supply. So this is basically 12. This is 12 volt there. And here you have 12 volt by 560 ohms. Someone less than 24. 21.4. 21.4. Okay. 21.4 milliampere. Okay. Close to 10 point something, 10.5, and close to 6 volt. You have got almost uh, 11.3 and 5.67 volt. That's great. What is the percentage change? What is the new IC? CCC by RC is the IC of IC max. IC max. No, that is IC max resulting from the load line itself. Uh -huh. That is the maximum value. That means the maximum value of IC that you can get out of this circuit. But remember, here you have a set of characteristic curves like this. And remember, IC, PC versus IC. Output characteristics. Yeah, new IC is 17 million here. 17 because there is no change in IV. IV is same. Only there is a bit of change. Because the last time, uh, so in the question it is mentioned that. We just neglect any change in GB. If any change in GB is considered, then IV will also change. Right, but this time you did mention that forget about any change in uh, BB. So that's why once again you have the same 0 0.7 volt there, same 0 0.7 volt there, same 100 kilo ohms, so 0.113 milliampere. Right? And then IC is equal to beta times IV, that is equal to now this beta is increased from 100 to 150. So 17 milliampere now, and PC is 2.48. Yes. Previous it was 5 point something. 5 point something to 2.48. So IC increases by 50 percent, and PC drops by 56.3. That now all are very good. Because you have a change in beta by 
fifty percent, hundred to one fifty. That means the change in beta, the change in IC by fifty percent. Quite obvious, because IC is going to be different side. IB is fixed. The beta changes by fifty percent. Then IC also changes by fifty percent in the same direction. Isn't it? And your BC changes by fifty-six point three percent. Big piece. So that is not at all a very good. So the answer is sixty percent. You have to find out the percentage change in IC and percentage change in BC. Actually, if I consider the change in dB with the increase in temperature, then it will be even more to your side. Why? Because if temperature increases, dB will drop. DB will drop. By say 0.7 to 0.6 volt, then I will be only like one or three milliampere. I will be even larger. You will even more develop. So that's why we just consider only one side. Let's change only only the because of temperature only beta beta beta. Plus change to one. So I just calculate, na? So just calculate. Let's 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 assume the beta is point six. What is the new value? Four. And then zero point one one four six. Ah, point one one four into one fifty. What is that? The beta is equal to zero point. One seventy one. If dB is equal to 0.6 volt at 75 degree centigrade, then your IBQ is equal to 0.114 milliampere, and ICQ how much? One. 17.1. 17.1. Milliampere. Then percentage change. Okay, somewhat larger than how much? Seventeen point one. Seventeen point one percent. Fifty one percent. Okay, not that much. Fifty one percent. Hopefully, I have not encountered this circuit previously. No, you have not encountered this circuit, which involves both modes of supply as well as division. Surprisingly, here this is connected to ground terminal through an resistance. So you might you might feel that okay, so this is not biased. But remember, this base emitter junction has to be bored. So if base is grounded, then, minus, then minus. the emitter terminal must be having some negative, negative voltage over there, so that the base emitter junction is bored. This is called the emitter bias circuit, right? Yes. <coughs> now, if I Before I move into the actual calculation uh, corresponding to this particular problem, let's try to emphasize whether uh, this circuit is stable with respect to fixed bias circuit or not. What do you feel? Suppose once again the Q point changes from, say, from for which the beta head is from 85 to 100, and at the same time the base beta voltage decreases from 0.7 to 0.2. That means we are taking into account both of these. That means because of the temperature change. Uh, the beta increases from 85 to 100, and uh, the beta drops from 0.7 to 0.6. Now let's try to uh, understand whether this circuit can combat this change. Yes or no? What do you think? Suppose there is a so qualitatively you have to understand. 
before before going into the actual calculation, you have to qualitatively uh, analyze the circuit, and finally you have to come to the conclusion. Last we have done that quality uh, analysis. Now suppose there is a change in beta because of temperature change, there is a change in beta. Now, if beta changes for a fixed IB, you have right? You have a higher IC. Now higher IC means higher IE also. So you have more drop across this. You have more drop across this. Now if I apply KVL over there, KVL over there, this voltage, let's assume that this voltage is constant for the time being, QB, that is constant. You have a minus 20 volt there and if, if you have more drop across there, that means you have a less drop to take place. So it can restrict, so a change, a positive change in IC, a positive change in IB. Or say let, let's consider positive change in, uh, let's consider only your uh, uh, beta changes, beta increases. So if beta increases, if beta increases, let's assume that IBQ is fixed. IBQ is fixed. So if beta increases, then obviously ICQ will increase. That means IQQ will also increase. So you have more drop across this IERE, right? More drop across IERE. Now, if I consider that particular loop, this is constant. Let's assume this is constant. This is fixed minus 20 volt. You have more drop over there. So therefore, this implies that IB RB drop will reduce. That means any change in beta, the positive detection, will ultimately result in the reduction in I. So you have a check and balance kind of. Even without going into the actual calculation, mathematical calculation, quantitative level, by using some data, qualitatively I can tell that if there is some change in beta, suppose beta increases, which leads to higher IQ or higher IQ, that means higher IER drop. So therefore, you have a lower IER to drop, as in RB is fixed. So therefore, IB must drop. Eventually, this IB beta IB product cannot increase that much. Last time you have seen that uh, if, even if your IB is fixed and beta changes at 50 percent positively, increases at 50 percent, then IC also increases at 50 percent. Right now here. 85 to 100, that means how much percentage? Almost uh, uh, close to 20%. Uh, 17.6%. Anyway, so something like that, close to that. Okay. Can you do this calculation? Much better. Is that is that uh, calculation clear to you? This one is it clear? Or shall I go for the KPL? Is it clear? This one, this calculation. It's okay now. You have to apply KPL here also. You have to apply KPL here. So what happens? Suppose. The IP flows in this direction. So if I have plus minus, so let it be I B R B. Plus B B. Plus we have B. Plus I E R E. Plus we have I E R E. And then minus B. That is equal to zero. Minus B E E is equal to zero. Right? That means what you have. IB times RB plus what is IE? What is I? One plus 
beta times that is equal to BEE minus BBE. Okay. So IP is equal to BEE minus BBE -E divided by RB plus 1 plus beta times Right? Yes. I can neglect it. Once you get this IP, then you can find out what is my IC. Beta times IP. Beta is 85. So, what we get? Uh, remember this time, it is not grounded. You have to find out this. Absolute value of the collector voltage, absolute capital voltage. Once you get this IC, that is 1.73. So they have, they have considered that IC and I they are same. So 1.73 milliampere. Then what is your VC value, collector voltage? VCC minus this drop, this voltage. VCC minus ICRC, that means equal to 11.9 volt. And what is V voltage? Minus V plus this. That means we are getting like minus 2.7 volt. So 11.9 volt, the collector voltage minus 2.7 volt emitter voltage so VC is 14.6 volt so this is equal to okay and the collector current is 1.73 milliampere right no here emitter is not grounded here emitter is connected through some resistance and there you have some negative supply. So previously your collector voltage was equal to the collector emitter voltage. Your emitter is connected to ground. But this time emitter is not connected to ground. So VCE is basically voltage minus emitter voltage. Because this voltage is not equal to ground. Right. Okay, now let's do the same calculation with beta is equal to 100. Last time beta was 85, this time beta was 100, and this time what to get? Last time what was the value? Okay, it was 1.73 milliampere. The IC this time it is 1.73 milliampere. Not that much increase, only 0 0.03 milliampere. Per second you check it. And as far as the VC is concerned, 14. Not that much, right? So it is 1.7 percent increase in IC and 3.5 percent increase in VC. So this circuit is much much double. What was your beta change? What is the beta part of 14.70%? 85 to 100, that is 15 upon 85. Right, 15 upon 85, that means uh, beta changes by, so beta changes by, increases by 17.5. 17%, say for example, approximately. Approximately. As IC increases by 1.7%. That means the corresponding change is desensitized. Corresponding change in beta is desensitized in the corresponding in the uh, this emitter bias circuit. Whenever you study the feedback amplifier, then you see that this is also called there is a there is a factor in the feedback amplifier which is called a desensitive detector. That means if there is some change in beta, that is not reflected in your IC change or in C change. Okay. That means this side is not that much sensitive to beta change. Which you want. As far as uh, design is concerned, we should know and we should expect that the circuit should be much more intensive to the expansion change and external changes. And this, this resistance RE is responsible for desensitizing that particular. So much better circuit. Another bias circuit, hopefully I have seen last day. Yes, sir. And it's another kind of feedback amplifier. We are studying this one. See another feedback amplifier. There is another piece. Feedback is there between collector to pins. Now here we are just observing this feedback from the DC analysis. And whenever you study the feedback amplifier in the unit number 5 or 6, at that time we will observe the same thing from the small signal. Yes, 
we'll start small similarities from the next class onwards. Anyway, so for this circuit, you have to find out the operating point. Find an operating point, so you have to find out the IC value and the value. IC can be the operating operating point. You apply it here, here. right? What is the formula there? What is this current? This current is the base current IV. What is this current? What is that current? Huh? Okay, you can call it IV. You can call it IV. From this. Here, this current is IV. So you have PCC. Minus this is minus what we have here. IB plus IC equals one. IB plus IC times one RC. Right? Minus IB RB minus BB is equal to zero. Right? So Okay, now uh, you can just neglect this IV part over there. You can uh, consider okay, this is C. So, what you can do is now that can be approximated to approximate. I can write this is C minus IC RC minus. IB RB minus PB is equal to zero. Right? Sir, but they have they have just neglected that uh, contribution because beta is very large. Beta is hundred. Otherwise, you have to consider uh, this entity. Typically, it should be the previous, the previous uh, equation. Anyway, so what you are getting, the IV value is equal to 0 0.096 milliampere. That means 96 microampere, large, large enough. And the connector is 0.6 milliampere. And you can find out the operating so the basic idea of demonstrating this dependence of the biasing circuit is to make you acquainted with the dependence. KVL equations and uh, there are the KVL equations in the base emitter loop and the current emitter. If I have uh, fixed bias circuit, base bias circuit, or uh, bias circuit, or say your connector to base uh, bias circuit, in that case, you have the different types of KVL equations. That is the basic idea. Make you familiar with different types of KVL equations. Yes. This is much more simple. With respect to what? This one. Which one? Ah, this is also stable. This is also stable, but not the simple fixed bias circuit or base bias circuit. This is also. Ah. There's a different types of things like. Uh, to set the operating point at 2 volt and 1 milliampere, so different types of questions. I need to find out the value of RB for beta is equal to. Okay. Okay. Uh, Q point is given 2 volt and 1 milliampere. I think VCC has to be provided. Yeah, VCC has to be provided. Yeah. To set the operating point at 2 volt 1 milliampere, find out the value of RB for beta is equal to 1. So typically we consider VB to 0 0.7 volt. Typically VB is 0.7 volt. And uh, if IC is given as 1 milliampere and beta is equal to 100, then what is your IB value? 1 upon 100, that is 0 0.0 milliampere. IP. Right now, BCE is equal to what? 
this voltage over there this voltage is equal to this voltage plus this voltage now this voltage is given to you you don't require explicit vcc this voltage is given like 2 volt and this is all that you also know vb you know this value 0.7 volt it is given so vcb is how much 1.3 volt third bus n pin transistor with inside having more voltage than the p side vcb is positive 1.3 volt it's 1.3 volt there is 1. what is the collector current collector can already have got 1 milliampere what is the base current 0.01 milliampere so 1.3 volt by 0.01 milliampere 130 kilo ohms so kind of bias design that i was talking about this is given you have to offset the operating point at 2 volt 1 milliampere this is given right then and beta is also given 100 then you need to what should be my this rp value not should be asked the collector to base by side 130 kilos then comes this circuit the popularly used circuit voltage divided by circuit last you have uh, discussed this one voltage divided by circuit right typically this kind of circuit here we have state of voltage divider resistors r1 r2 this is the collector resistance and there is the this is an emitter resistance over there. Not three. Find out the emitter current and collector potential of the given circuit. That is the problem. Right. 20 volt is the supply. We have so for the sake of simplicity, both of these two resistances are of 10 kilo. Right? Here, this voltage, how much? At the base stop, what do you expect? Uh, is it only 10? Or somewhat deeper? Is it only 10? Or somewhat deeper? Here, yeah, it is 10. Remember, last day we have discussed, remember. It seems that it seems that you have one resistance from supply to base in the form of R1. You have another resistance from base to R in the form of R2. So typically, it's something like that. This is a supply. You have R1 there, R2 there. This is grounded. Would like to find out this voltage. This is pretty easy. Uh -huh. This upon R1 plus R2 into multiplied with R. And since here R1 both of them are separate, this is upon But the story doesn't end here. This time you understand that okay, we don't have only one, uh, uh, rather this two is R1 and R2. Apart from that, we have something connected. Something connected in the form of transistor with some emitter resistance and that provides some R in base. The input resistance looking into the base of the transistor. So this transistor is actually loading this circuit. Right, it's not simple R1, uh, this is the upper R1 plus R2 multiplied with R2, it's not like that. You have another R in base coming in parallel with R2. Now sometimes for approximate calculation, I can just neglect this R in base. If this R in base, if this R in base is much much larger, much much larger than R2. In which case we call it a steep voltage divider bias. Steep voltage divider bias. That means the transistor is not going to load the, the bias, bias calculation. Right. So then, under this condition only, we have got this value of V2 to be 10 volt. This is 10 volt. There you have this drop, 0 0.7 volt drop over there. So, this 10 volt is basically this drop plus this drop. 
This drop you know, with decimeter drop you know, that is 0 0.7 volt. No, R in phase is not 5 kilometers. What was R in phase? R in phase was last time I went, last time we have calculated that is equal to beta times R. Beta times R, R in phase is equal to beta times R. That is equal to beta times R in, R in phase. What does beta? Beta is given like how much? Is it provided there? As to be. Let it be the 100. If it is the 100. Then 100 into 5. 500 kilos. 500 kilos is much much larger than this. So therefore I can simply neglect and then what I am getting. Uh, okay, they also they have made another approximation. Maybe they have just neglected VB. VB is generally small, so they are so simply V2 upon RD, so 10 volt by 5 kilo. Typically it should be 9.3 volt by 5 kilo. If it is 10 volt by 5 kilo, then it is 2 milliampere, but actually it should be somewhat less than 2 milliampere. Right. So I see it is under 2 milliampere, I equal 2 milliampere. What is the VC, character diameter voltage? VCC. What is this voltage? This is 20 volt minus this drop minus this drop. If I assume that the same current is flowing through this RC and RD, so therefore it is simply IC into RC plus RD. It's coming out to be 8 volt. So we put the parallel over there, 8 by 8 by 8. What is that voltage? What is this IERE? This, this voltage, this is VB. There you have VB, and there you have IERE drop. Okay. Clear? Huh? 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 Right? Now, suppose we like to find out the exact, the exact, the exact. Then what has to be done? So that there will be has to be done? Parallel has to be done. Then you need to find out the definite equivalent mod of this part. Definite equivalent mod between this point and this point. Between this point and this point, between this point and ground, you have to find out the correspondence of this part of the circuit. You can consider what is the equivalent, definite equivalent mod. What is that? How to find out? This is your transistor mod. This is the transistor. So over here, I am having this complicated cycle. I am having R1, I am having R2, I am having this VCC, something like that. I would like to find out. So between these two terminals, between this point and the ground terminal, between these two terminals, I would like to find the equivalent resistance and the equivalent voltage, PTH and RTH. Between this base. So, in order to find out the definite equivalent resistance, what do you have? This R1 and R2, they are coming in parallel. They are coming in parallel because there should not be any independent voltage source. For the calculation of this certain voltage, this uh, any independent voltage source must be made inactive. So, now this time. This is also inactive. This is this is inactive. So this is so here you have one connection from this terminal to ground, another connection from this terminal to ground. Right? That is your R company. Yes. What is your two company? What is the V family? 
So the rest part, so this part, rest of the should be disconnected. Rest of the thing should be disconnected. Right. So under this condition, what should be by this voltage over there? No, no, not really. In terms of uh, VCC, R1 and R2. What is that voltage? So I have to, so this part of the circuit is uh, disconnected. I would like to find out the threatening equivalent of this. So VCC R1 and R2. So what is that voltage over there? This is basically VCC upon R1 plus R2 multiplied with R2. Isn't it? So then ultimately, your circuit reduces to what? Your circuit reduces to this. So your circuit reduces to this. RC here. RB here. This is V family. This is R family. Right? What is your V family? That is equal to R2 upon R1 plus R2 times VCC. What is your R family? <coughs> R1. Now your circuit reduces to this one. And then you apply. Then you apply the KVL in this particular way. Apply KVL in this way. What is that? With happening? What is the expression? With happening? Is equal to? I P Q times R thepni plus plus V P E Q or V P E plus I E Q and remember this I E Q is nothing but one plus V times I P Q, right? So all these values are given. So V thepni you have calculated because V C is given, R one is given, R two is given. You can calculate V thepni. You can calculate R thepni. You can calculate if the RPB is given to you, beta is known to you. So only unknown parameter is your IP. Beta is given. IP is the only unknown parameter. So what is the expression for IP then? So IP or IPQ is how much? VCC minus VBE. No minus. R Tebni. Plus one plus beta times once you get I B Q, beta is equal to find out I B Q. Once you get I C Q, I C Q is flowing through this R C. This is I C Q current. Find out collector potential. VCC minus IC RC. What is emitter potential? I times I Q times R E. What is your VC? From this formula only. Only unknown parameter is I Q. Everything is known, na? I Q is one plus beta times I B Q. So this is the formula. Once you get I B Q, you can get I C Q beta times I I. And VC is how much? VCC. Minus IC times or ICQ times RC. And you know ICQ is equal to beta times IVQ. And what is your VE? VE is nothing but IEQ times RE. This voltage. This is your VC character voltage. This is the 
emitter voltage right and what is this is the dc minus b do this calculation right and find out is any change in dc Change in the 